Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. It is Tuesday. It is uh, time for another author interview, and I hope that you are having a great week so far. Hope you had a good weekend. I was trying to think earlier before I started recording, what did we even do this weekend? And then I remembered, oh yes, we worked and we were sick. <laughs> My husband and I, uh, nothing major, just both feeling a little bit blah at times. And so we were, we worked both Saturday and Sunday. So I have absolutely no idea what day it is, even though I did say it was Tuesday. So I'm proud of myself for actually doing this episode on the correct day. Um, I have no idea what day it is because we worked through the weekend and we uh, were both feeling kind of sick. We didn't like work. 20 hour days or anything. We didn't make ourselves sick, but we've got a big project coming up that we've been working on. So took a little extra time. Um, but this weekend coming up, we are going to a Christmas market. So I'm excited about that. And I'll have to tell you about that next week. Just um, the little Christmas market in our village here in Portugal. But uh, I'm excited. It's my first European Christmas market. So that'll be fun. That's one of my goals while we are living in Europe is to hopefully next year, travel to different countries to Christmas markets. Uh, Our German friends sent us pictures of a couple of the Christmas markets that they've been into, and they are gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I'm looking forward to that. I know that there's just a million different little Christmas, little, not little, some little and some big Christmas markets all over Europe, right? So that's on my goal, my my goal list for living here. Uh, At any rate, um, we are not here to talk about Christmas markets, <laughs> although I probably could for an hour, and I will try not to next week. If 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 it's good or bad, I'll try not to you know regale you with my my Carvoeiro Christmas market experiences. But um, let's talk about a book instead. I have a returning guest Carter Wilson joining me today to talk about his newest novel. It's called The New Neighbor. It is. Um, suspense. It is psychological, and here is the description from the book. Aiden holds the winning Powerball numbers. Is today the best day of his life or the worst? Aiden Marlowe is the superstitious type. He's been playing the same lottery numbers for 15 years, never hitting the jackpot until now, on the day of his wife's funeral. Aiden struggles to cope with these two sudden extremes, instant wealth beyond his imagination and the loss of the only woman he's ever loved, the mother of his twin children. But the money gives him and his kids options they didn't have before. They can leave everything behind. They can start a new life in a new town, so they do. But a huge new house and all the money in the world can't replace what they've lost, and it's not long before Aiden realizes he's merely trading old demons for new ones because someone is watching him and his family very closely. Someone who knows exactly who they are, where they've come from, and what they're trying to hide. Someone who will stop at nothing to get what they want. And that is the description of The New Neighbor by Cardo Wilson. Um, there's so many things that I want to tell you about this book, but uh, they tend to be the, the, great, the good twists and turns in the story, and so I can't tell you about them because I don't want to ruin things. But... Um, it is, it, it's a ride, I'll tell you that. Um, Aiden has obviously some crazy issues. I mean, he just won the lottery. That's a life changer and uh, not in a good way for a lot of people. His wife just died. That obviously is hard. He's trying to now raise seven-year-old twins um, who are dealing with their own grief and their own lives being disrupted. And so he's just, he's got a lot. You know, those... Um, 
that there's that, that whole checklist of things that if one or two of them happen in a year, you've had a really, really rough year and they involve death of a loved one, maybe something like winning the lottery, moving, those sorts of things. Well, Aiden's checking off way too many on that list in this book. Um, that, that'll get you started on Aiden's character. And then he starts having these threats and these notes left for him in this new place where no one should know him and no one should know that he's won the lottery and it just goes from there and it it like I said takes a lot of twists and turns and um you should definitely check it out if you are interested in the good old psychological suspense thriller genre but I'm gonna let Carter tell you more about the book so again the book is called The New Neighbor the author is Carter Wilson let's go to the interview Hi, Carter. Welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for having me on. Glad to be here again. I'm glad to have you. And we are here to talk about your newest novel, The New Neighbor. Before we do that, though, if you could um, share a little bit about yourself, both for those who maybe didn't hear the first interview or who maybe need a bit of a refresher. Yeah, sure. So I've uh, I've been writing for about uh, 20 years. I kind of Started writing out of the blue um, and found that I enjoy writing dark psychological thrillers. So um, uh, over the past 20 years, I, I've been fortunate enough to have um, eight books come out, all standalone thrillers, um, of which The New Neighbor is the latest. And uh, yeah, it's it's been a long, bumpy road, as as most writers will attest. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm finally in a place where, um, you know, I'm just grooving with my books. Nice. Um, and the, stand, the new neighbor is standalone, but it does have some tie-ins with your last novel, The Dead Husband. So um, we'll, we'll touch on that. But can you give an overview of The New Neighbor? Neighbor, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, um, you know, most of my books, all I, I don't outline. Um, so most of my books kind of, the only thing I know is usually the opening. I never know the ending, never know anything else. And just, I have this idea for an opening. I don't really know what it means or who these people are, but it's just an opening that was interesting to me. And, and in the case of the new neighbor, I just pictured this, you know, 35 ish year old man at the funeral for his wife. Um, and they've got the, she left behind a couple twin children and it's just this devastating scene. And at one point during the funeral, he finds himself that this, this, this character finds himself alone with his wife's casket just for a few minutes. And, and it's kind of this last opportunity to say goodbye. And as he's doing that, his cell phone buzzes in his pocket and he checks and it's a text informing him. He's just won the Powerball. Um, so that was the opening that came to me. I just like, love this idea of the, you know, somebody who uh, is, is, going through just emotional <laughs> devastation uh, while winning the lottery. What, what does that do to you? Um, so that was the setup for the book. And essentially he, he moves his family into a, a mansion and um, dark things start happening as he slowly loses his mind. <laughs> so that, that was, that was where I was going with it. All right. And um, he, he just happens to move into the same house that was the location for your last novel. So how did that come about? Yeah. So I, I finished the last novel, which is called The Dead Husband. And the house in that in that um, book was actually a bit of a major character, you know, and it, it's a mansion, but it's a modern mansion. It's a 1980s gaudy uh, suburban mansion. Um, and when I finished writing that book, I... I just knew I wasn't done writing about that house. Um, so when I wrote The New Neighbor, I decided that The New Neighbor was going to actually take place in that same house, just an entirely different set of characters. And it takes place about six months after uh, The Dead Husband ends. Um, so yeah, so they are both standalone novels, but they do have crossover elements to them. So if, if you were to read both of them in whatever order, there would be more, I guess, more reveals or, or you have more Easter eggs. So it was, it was a bit of a challenge to, to have a write a crossover book without ruining anything in either book, you know? So it was, but it, it took a while, but we figured it out. Time to take the first break. When we come back, Carter will obviously be talking more about the book, but I'll also tell you why this book made me think for a few minutes that I might be going crazy. So uh, stay tuned for that. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. 
you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do. All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with Carter Wilson. Before the break, he was talking about the new book, The New Neighbor, and how it ties in with his last book, The Dead Husband. So let's go ahead and return to that interview. I thought maybe I was going a little bit crazy when I started reading the book because I'm like, (laughs) this feels like that house in the last book. Why does this feel like the house in the last book? (laughs) And before it got to the point where, yes, you do reveal that it is the same house. I'm reading the backs of both books, trying to figure out if it says, <laughs> yes, this is the same. <laughs> right, right, right. So I'm, I'm sitting there. Thankfully, you cleared it up quickly enough. Like, <laughs> it wasn't like two. Yeah, it can be a bit confusing. Um, I, I did think I was losing my mind a little bit. <laughs> well, good. Then, then yeah. my work is done. <laughs> it fits right in with your book. So good, <laughs> <right>. good job. <laughs> um, your initial inspiration was that image of the main character winning the lottery at the same time, at his, basically at his wife's funeral. That was your jumping off point. Can you talk a little bit more about Marlo, who's the main character, Aiden Marlo, and how he came to be and what about him might resonate with readers? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, you know, again, I because I don't outline, a lot of what I do just kind of comes to me. And and when it does, it's just like, all right, this is what it has to be. I don't really question it. And I just pictured this 35-year-old Irishman. He's from Ireland. I have no idea why he's from Ireland, but that's what came to me. I'm like, okay, challenge accepted. Um, but he's he's really somebody who who grow, grew up, you know, in Ireland, um, you know, fairly poor. Um, and kind of always helped with his family's pub, and he and he and he met this woman, his future wife Holly, while she was on holiday in in, in Ireland, and he married her, fell in love, and and uh, you know they moved back to the states. Um, but he's always been this this working class guy, um, just you know struggling to kind of meet and make ends meet for his family. They have they have twin children. Um, but really his, his wife, you know, his family's his life. And then when he loses his wife, you know, it's just, it's just devastating to him. So it's really, it is quite, it's a, even though it's a thriller, it's a, it's a book that's heavily rooted in, in, you know, the exploration of, of grief. And, you know, I, I think some readers might, you know, resonate with that. Some readers might not, but I really wanted to, I just wanted to, to see him go through all these different things and see if he was going to make it out the other side. Cause I didn't know, you know, it was, it's a pretty dark book and he really goes through a lot in it, not only from, you know, his own, his, his own grief and questioning of his own sanity, but then, you know, existential threats actually happening, um, you know, as, as evidenced by, you know, these anonymous notes being left in his driveway saying that he's being watched. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's where, where, where he was coming from. Books like this are always a little bit hard to talk about because I don't want to give things away. Um, but since you aren't a plotter per se, did the twist, some of the twists at the end come as a surprise to you? They always do. I mean, I, I usually have an idea about the actual, actual ending, you know, probably around 75, 80% of the way into the books. Um, but a lot of times twists just occur to me that day as I'm writing, it just, you know, as, as a writer, I'm constantly asking myself, what if, you know, what if this happened or what if this, and, and from that comes these kind of crazy twists that then you have to kind of analyze and say, does this make sense? Um, but you know, what's great is if it's a surprise to me, it's hopefully going to be a surprise to the reader as well. 
do you have any sort of system in place for um, making sure that everything makes sense? Do you have someone else that reads it or do you go back through and, and make sure that the flow is right and that you, the twists that have just come to you actually fit in with the rest of the story? Yeah, for sure. As every writer does, right? I mean, it, it really comes alive in the editing as, as difficult as editing is, but um, yeah, so there's multiple revisions before I even show it to anyone. Um, but then again, you're, you know, even after multiple revisions, you were too close to your book to have to really know if it's working or not. Um, my partner, Jessica, is the first to, to, to read a finished manuscript and she does some copy editing for me. And then it goes to my agent and then obviously the editor. And I also have a workshop group um, that usually sees not the whole thing, but chapters here and there. Um, but it's it's so critical as a writer to have those other voices to tell you if it's working or not, because otherwise, otherwise you lose all context for it. Yeah, I would imagine that it can be a little difficult and um, some of the twists and turns. Um, it, again, I don't want to give things away, but Marlo can be um, in some ways he's a pretty basic father guy, you know, family guy, but he's, he's also very complicated in other ways. So in terms of character development, how do you keep characters, you know, in, in, in their, their space, keep them, you know, so that they're not, they're not completely becoming a new character, but also um, kind of monitor that development as, as they grow throughout the book. Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, you know, whether I, whether or not I'm writing from a male or female point of view, I'm always asking myself, you know, what would I do in this situation? And that's really kind of the therapy of writing is, is to put yourself in your character's shoes and kind of safely experience what they're going through and, and, and try to kind of empathize with them in doing so. And in the case of Marlo, he, he is, you know, literally in the course of a few days, his entire world is 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 just rocked to a place that he doesn't know if he can ever get back to, to the person he was so it was really kind of a rebirth for him um and you know and it's very easy to go on and on and on from an introspective point of view from your character and, and i remember my editor even even saying she's like all right we need a little bit more action here because He's just, <laughs> he's just thinking all the time. So, you know, she pulled me out of that a little bit. Um, but again, it, it, it's important for him to, for me to have that character go through that journey just to see what happens. And sometimes they do go <laughs> off, off the rails and that's, that's okay. Um, and that was certainly the case for Marlo. He starts questioning, you know, his own sanity and his own perspective on things. And, um, and, you know, I always felt that somebody in his situation that that seemed like a pretty, you know, pretty logical road to be traveling down. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, one of those things, losing a spouse or winning the lottery would be a huge shift, but both it's a lot. And then moving somewhere and having threats, it's all a lot. Right. And that's not even covering the things that we're not talking about in his past that people that people need to read <laughs> to find out more. Right, right. You know, I, 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 the, I think the past is very important to characters. I, you know, I don't think you want to go super deep and spend, you know, 100 pages talking about backstory. But, you know, things that have happened in a character's past inform how they act in the future, and especially how they act in the face of extreme adversity. Sometimes, you know, your past will come very much alive in those moments almost unexpectedly. So it was important to me that Marlo, you know, has had tragedy in his past and has, you know, and that has kind of informed who he is and and certainly plays a role in how he reacts to what he's going through, you know, in the present day. Let's go ahead and take the second break. But this is one of those points when I really want to tell you more about Aiden and the character and what Carter is referring to here with his past and and some of the things that are influencing his life now. But of course, I can't. And that is part of the problem with you know this being a podcast and not a book club is that I can't tell you if you haven't read it already. <sighs> All right. That's my little, I'm done. I will let you go to the break. And when we come back, uh, Carter will be talking about research for this book. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. 
There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with Carter Wilson. We are talking about his new novel, The New Neighbor. Let's go back to the interview. Um, did you do any specific types of research for the book? I can only imagine you're one of those authors whose internet history is very, very interesting. <laughs> it is. I have pretty dark history. Um, but, I, you know, not really. I, I, I don't really like research, so I, I tend not to put myself in a position where research is going to be a critical element to the telling of a story. Um, I mean, there are certain exceptions with that. Um, but, you know, in the case of Marlowe, for example, like I, I really needed to make sure I understood um, about, you know, where he grew up, you know, you know, the, the, the geography of Dublin, I really wanted to understand. I, I think that the, the biggest struggle was how does he speak? You know, what does he sound like? And I didn't want to, I didn't want to overdo it, um, but I wanted to make sure when he and and his father is Irish. And so when they have conversations, I wanted to sound authentic without being overwhelming to, to a, a non-Irish reader. Um, so that took a decent amount of research. Um, and then the other thing I'll just note in terms of like, you know, research or pulling things from the real, real world. Um, part of the book was also inspired by um, which be, <laughs> just last year became a major uh, Netflix series, The Watcher, about this house in New Jersey where this couple moved in and they started receiving these creepy notes saying that they were being watched. I, I read that article years ago and I just and I knew that I wanted to to have that be an element into something that I wrote and and that came about with the new neighbor. And uh, and then <laughs> literally six months after my book comes out, this Netflix series comes out called The Watcher. I'm like, wow, <laughs> art imitating life. Yeah, absolutely. Art imitating art. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Um, you also, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, Barry, New Hampshire, where the book takes place, is fictional. So did you spend much time kind of creating that town or having an idea of how it was laid out, those sorts of things? Yeah, a little bit. I, I have a decent idea how it's laid out. I mean, I don't have like a diorama in my attic or anything like that. But, uh, you know, I, I have this, you know, when I was when I was originally setting out to write the the dead husband, the book prior to this one that was set in Bury, New Hampshire, I, I was looking for a town in New Hampshire that kind of checked the boxes of what I wanted and I couldn't find one. So I just, I just made one up. Um, but there's plenty of towns that are close to that. So I, you know, I do have an idea in my head of like where things are, what it looks like, you know, where the gated communities exist, that kind of a thing. Totally random, but do they still make kids make dioramas? <laughs> they i don't know i don't know it's maybe maybe at science fairs maybe i feel like we're showing i mean i feel like yeah, i had to make dioramas as a kid so i don't know if i'm showing my age or not but <laughs> i did too yeah. um, what is it about psychological suspense thriller that genre that um draws you to writing within it yeah, that's a good question. And, and and I have my own podcast. So I, you know, I talk to authors all the time and I ask similar questions and, you know, regardless of what they, they, they write, I was just talking to a horror writer and, you know, most writers will say they don't know. And I think that's fair. You know, a lot of times it's like what you were 
what you enjoyed reading growing up, I certainly gravitated to Stephen King and and um, books of suspense for sure. Um, but I think you know, uh, one, I think I'm I'm good at it, and I think you gravitate to the talents that you have. I don't think I would be good at writing romance or you know maybe some other genres. Um, but I I just like conflict. I I like writing about conflict because. You know, a lot of people say, well, that's dark. Why do you write such dark stuff? To me, my books are hopeful because, you know, as much as I throw conflict at my characters, I do want to see them succeed. I, they just have to work really hard for it. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and I think, again, it's that safe space. It's like, it's like, why do you watch horror movies? Well, I watch horror movies because I can be scared and safe at the same time. And that's kind of what writing thrillers is like, is like, I get to live these kind of scary, thrilling things, but know that I'm always safe. Um, so I, you know, I think that's what draws me to it. Okay. Makes sense. That's fair. Uh, I was kind of giggling when you were saying, you know, you could write romance and this book, you know, it, it could have gone that direction. You know, you could have had a lovely <laughs> encounter of an American tourist in an Irish bar and you could have a very yep. nice Hallmark movie, but no, you had to go the dark route. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I do believe, I believe heavily in, in writing from a place of emotion, um, whatever that emotion may be. So if my characters are in love, I do want to explore what that love is and, and understand the depth of it rather than just saying these characters are in love. So it's, it is important to me every time I sit down and write, I come from a space of like, you know, what is, what is everybody feeling? <laughs> and because I think that's when you get more of a genuine story than just like, you know, the plot, these things happen, these things happen, um, you know, without emotion, I think a story is nothing. Yeah, absolutely. This book has uh, seven-year-old twins. Um, I can't remember how old Max was in the last book, but, you know, there are children in the books. Do you find children fairly easy to write or is it, you know, is it harder to kind of tap into what children might be thinking at any given age? They're difficult for sure. I mean, I'm a father, so I've, you know, my kids are 19 and 17. So I've, you know, I've experienced obviously raising kids at, at those ages. You know, the kids I write about are typically, a little, a little messed up. Um, but I, I love writing, you know, about kids because they're, they're so unfiltered and they're, you know, they're just, um, they kind of reveal things to the other characters that maybe the other characters are just trying to avoid, um, seeing and, and just because of how innocent kids are, um, you know, it, it just makes it for, for, I think a great, um, you know, a great development to have kids in there. Um, but they need to contribute to the story, right? They need to have the plot move forward and, and it also always raises the stakes. Right. And that's always interesting to me. So if, uh, if, if, if there's a parent child relationship in the book, you know, any threat to that child, it just becomes overwhelming. Um, so I, I, I just like the fact that they can also be used to raise the stakes significantly in a story. Yeah. Children or a dog. Don't do anything to those in the book or it's definitely going to make it a simple. <laughs> yep. I've learned my lesson on that. <laughs> I think we talked about that last time. Yeah. Time for the last break. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple, it's simple, such a sad song. The one that one that we rely on to get us to get us 
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Carter Wilson. What are you working on right now? I uh, So I've been writing something for quite some time. Um, it's uh, it's probably the most difficult book I've, I've ever written just because it's changed so much over time. Um, but it's, um, yeah, and it's a little bit different. It's a thriller, but it's it's about a 21-year-old woman in 1987 and she's a savant uh she became a savant through physical trauma when she was young um and it's just kind of about her trying to find her father who left when she was in a coma uh back when when she went through that trauma um so it's it's gone through a lot of different revisions i'm probably a a few weeks out from you know kind of the final major revision and then um hopefully it'll be out uh you know, late next year. All right. And when you take time to read for yourself, um, what, what, what have you been reading lately? I guess is a good question. That is a good question. I'm always reading something. I'm, I'm actually now reading uh, the new Cormac McCarthy novel, um, which I think is his first one in 15 years uh, since I think maybe even since the road. Um and it's and it's it's a difficult read, but it's good. Um, and I just read Mark Stevens's. He's a buddy of mine. The Fireballer. Um, it's a baseball f- novel coming out in um, in January, and it's, and it's fantastic. Um, but I alternate between fiction and nonfiction. Um, you know, but I re- I read every day, but it might be five minutes, and then I fall asleep in bed. But I I I I, I do make sure I read every day. Yep, understandable. I, I tend to read before bed, even if I can barely keep my eyes open, it has to be at least a few minutes. And then the next night you reread what you <laughs> read because <laughs> yeah. you can't remember. And then you're on the same chapter for three weeks. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, well, I know that you have a website. So if you can um, refresh people about your, your social media or your internet presence, website and social media. Yep. Yep. Everything's just, uh, my website's uh, carterwilson.com. And then that, if you just go there, it has all my links to Facebook and Instagram and I am not on Twitter. All right. Uh, thank you. Carter, is there anything that we haven't covered, um, during this time that you were wanting to highlight? I don't think so. I just want to say thanks for the opportunity to uh, get a chat with you again. Well, I appreciate you joining me. That was great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you once again to Carter for joining me a second time. I was actually remembering that the last time I interviewed him, oh, and I did not give you the interview number, the episode number, rather, if you want to go back and listen to that other episode where we talk about the dead husband, and that episode is number 301. But I interviewed him last summer when I was in Montana and I loaned that book to a friend of mine so she could read it. And she said, uh, I got a text from her after I'd gone back to California and she said that her, her husband kept giving her weird looks because she was reading The Dead Husband and he was like, are you trying to tell me something? Um, it just made me laugh and I thought about that this time when we were uh, we were talking about a little bit about that book in addition to The New Neighbor. But um, thank you to Carter for joining me. If you are a fan of this genre, suspense, psychological, definitely psychological with this one. There's a lot going on underneath the surface and there's a lot going on with the main character of Aiden as well as some of the secondary characters, his children, obviously his father has some things in his past that are feeding into his relationship with Aiden. And there's just a lot going on. And I just remembered that I was going to tell Carter that I think um, Maya, the the lawyer, we didn't really talk much about her character, but I kind of feel like she needs her own novel. I want to know more about her, but uh, that's neither here nor there in terms of this. But Again, if you're looking for holiday gifts, there's still time to shop, and maybe this is something that you want to give someone. You could give the two as a set, the dead husband and the new neighbor, and since you know they're, they're both standalones, you can definitely read them on their own, but the setting is the same, which is interesting. Not really sequels, but uh, two books set in the same house, which makes for kind of an interesting... Um, connection for this duology. Again, they're standalones, they're not a duology, but you know what I mean. 
Thank you, as always, to you for joining me for these interviews and for chatting about books. I am very, very grateful to you. If you are a fan of this podcast, you know what I'm going to say next. Like, subscribe, follow on whatever platform you listen to the podcast on. Again, that just helps you get the episodes as soon as they come out and then you won't miss any or there won't be any surprises when there's a, an extra episode during the week. Also, leave a review. Very, very lovely if you could do that. Starred or written or thumbs up emoji. I mean, whatever, however it works on your platform. Again, it just helps to get this podcast out to more book lovers, such as your help, your, yourselves. Wow, can't talk. Uh, it not only helps the podcast, but it helps the authors who are on the podcast because then more people learn about their books and maybe want to read them and leave them reviews. It's just a whole circle of podcast publishing, reading, what have you. Um, yeah, and then also follow on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And tell me what you're reading. Check in, tell me what you're reading. Tell me again if you've read any of the authors that I've interviewed and what you have thought about their books, which books you have read, uh, and even books by authors that have been on the podcast that we haven't talked about. I would love to hear your thoughts. So hit me up on social media. In the meantime, I've already said in the meantime a couple of times, haven't I? Doesn't matter. I hope you're having a good week. Hope it's off to a really good start. Hope it continues to go well, but regardless, as always, I hope that your week affords you plenty of time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.